Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Now we've been talking about what Jesus said. Look, God is a spirit. And he says the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers who worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And I've been telling you this all week. To worship God in spirit and in truth is simple. To hear his voice and obey what he commands you to do. Not, I'm not talking about a prophet coming to tell you what God is saying. Now that has his own role. But I'm talking about how you live your life day by day. Every day of your life. You must hear the voice of God for yourself. Jesus rightly said it, um, quoted, quoting from, from Moses. He says, man shall not live by bread alone. But by what? Every word that proceeds notice he didn't say that proceeded he says every word that proceeds from the mouth of god proceeds is present continuous so god is still speaking till this day he didn't stop speaking with moses he didn't stop speaking with the folks of the old testament he didn't stop speaking with the apostles of jesus that walked with him on the earth he didn't stop speaking with your pastor he is still speaking today praise god so yesterday i was telling you about atmospheres you create to hear the voice of god so i said number one Reading your Bible, studying your Bible. And I don't mean open your Bible, read one scripture, you know, say God has something. You know, that when we're much, much younger, you know, that, that game we play. God has, wonderful game, yeah, you know, wonderful game. Listen, listen, pay close attention for God has something to say. You, and then you quote the scripture. And so you quote, say the scripture, quote the verse, and then, oh, okay, all right. We'll continue the, 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 the game. It was actually a game. Righteous games we play. Praise God. So, I'm not just talking about opening one verse of scripture and reading. No, I'm telling you. I'm talking, telling you about getting yourself in the mood to study scriptures. You know, you sit with it. You tell yourself, I'm going to finish two chapters, three chapters, four chapters. I'm going to read a whole book. You say, I, I understand. Just keep reading. Just keep reading. God will send you words. Praise God. You remember the Ethiopian Enoch? You know, he, he went to Jerusalem for worship and he was going back. What was he doing? He was reading the scriptures. Now, as at that time, he had not received the Holy Spirit. He wasn't born again yet, but he loved God. And so he was reading the scripture. What happened now? Just think about this. This man was riding his chariots somewhere in the wilderness, in the desert, going home, traveling to Ethiopia. And, and this man of God named Philip was somewhere doing his own thing. And then the word of the Lord came to him. He says, hey, go over to Susan's so place. He says, he went. He got and said, Lord, what am I doing here? God says, get on that chariot. See that chariot? Join yourself to that chariot. He said, okay. So he saw the guy going and said, excuse me, excuse me. Please, can, can you help me? And the man said, all right, come on. And when he got in the chariot, the Bible says, he met him reading the scriptures. He was reading the book of Isaiah. Praise God. And then he, 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 he now paused and says, hey, is this, this writer, was he talking about himself or someone else? And that was the door Philip needed. And Philip began to minister Jesus to the man. And when he was done, the man got born again and he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Now from that moment, he, isn't it amazing? Ah. Isn't it amazing that God didn't say, Philip, you see this man, he just got born again. I want you to follow him to his country, disciple him, nurture him, teach him everything I have taught you. No! Think about this. This, oh, Marapu Sheke, Lekwando. Listen, the church needs to really come to, to that place that we understand the concept of salvation and how the Holy Spirit does it. Because, you see, looking at the church over time, I want to tell you this, and it is the truth. Many times, it is human beings that have stunted the growth of many. You feel, I got you born again, so you, you have to do what I tell you to do. No, sir. 
Jesus saw this man traveling on a journey. He wasn't coming to Jerusalem. He was going back from Jerusalem. If he was coming to Jerusalem, you would think, so after Philip met him, possibly when he, he got he met some apostles and, and disciples and they began to nurture him. No, sir. He was going home. The Lord sent Philip, meet this guy on the way. He met him preached to him, got him saved, got him filled with the Holy Ghost, and the man left to his country. What was going to happen to him? Won't he backslide? Come on now. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, and nobody can take that work from him. And we better learn from that. We better learn from that. Look, look, look around Christians. If you can observe, look around, you will find that, you know, sometimes, you know, people, they go to church, and then you hear them say, you know, you know, you, you know sometimes you're talking to someone, say, ah, uh, that church, they don't love at all. They don't love. I say, what do you mean they don't love at all? See, now, I came to that church, I came like three times, nobody ever came to visit me, nobody ever came to follow me up. And sometimes you're wondering, you hear that thing, you're saying, man, did anybody actually follow me up? Nobody did follow me up, man. And, and I, I heard the gospel and I just felt, come on now, this thing needs to be everywhere. <laughs> Praise God. No, the people who really are doing well in the gospel of Jesus Christ truly needed nobody to follow them up. The Bible talked about Paul. He said the moment he received Christ, he said straightway he preached Christ. He didn't go, hey, now that I've received Christ, so what next? Yes, okay, what next? No, no, no. They, they haven't really received salvation yet. I'm telling you the truth. When you receive Jesus, Maru Pradika Shakabaya, you, you will need someone to stir you up to pray. You will need someone to tell you, hey, you need to read your Bible. You will need, a hunger will just drop in your spirit. And, and from that moment, you, you will begin to, well, what's wrong with everybody? I'm telling you, you what, what's wrong? How, how come people don't pray? What, how, you, know, you, you will just, uh, in, you know, then you have the elders, those, those elders that will say, mm, we understand, fresh zeal, we're looking at you. You will grow up. You will soon grow. Don't listen to those people. Don't listen to them. They will quench your spirits. Go as far as you can from such people. You know, you, say, say, you, know, you, you, you are just saying, <laughs> this is how we started, do. This is how we started. When you grow, you will understand. Don't listen to such people. Something, if truly they started that way, something happened to them along the way. Don't listen to them, lest the same accident that happened to them will happen to you. When they say, Oh, oh, thank you, sir, you go on in and say, Lord, what do you want me to do next? Lord, what do you want? I've been living like this for many years now, man. <laughs> and, and he hasn't stopped telling me what next to do. Praise God. And I enjoy that presence. So I said, you study your Bible. Then you pray. You pray. Learn to always pray. And when you pray, pray to listen. Pray to hear. What do I mean by that? Don't just go, Okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've prayed for how long now? One hour. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And then I'm going out now. Come on now. If you set yourself to pray for one hour, that's discipline and it's good. And you set yourself, you pray and pray and pray. And after praying for like 10, 15 minutes, get quiet a bit. Just get quiet. Calm your mind. Calm your spirit. And observe the things that will go through your mind. Now, if you find out your mind is still one, you know, and then you get quiet. And when you get quiet, you're thinking, mm, did, I, did I cover the pots in the stew when I was, oh, ah, then, ah okay, ah, well, okay, what, what shoe am I even going to wear today? Ah, oh, you, know, you're, you know what, when those are the thoughts that are coming, 
fire on. <laughs> Praise God. You just fire on. Continue and continue and continue and continue. And, continue. and then you pause for a bit and, and get quiet a bit. And, and observe again what's going. And then suddenly, listen, it may not happen the first time, but listen, practice this. Soon, you just begin to you just begin to see yourself get into the office and you see yourself going through a certain door. Now what's happening? It's not you now. It's not you thinking. The Holy Spirit is moving you. The Holy Spirit is, is leading you somewhere now. He's showing you things to come. And so now you're praying and then you just see somebody wearing a red shirt. And then you get to work. Maybe you did this at home. And then you get to work or you go to where you're going to. And you see that same person with a red shirt like, Whoa, I saw this. See, it doesn't necessarily mean you go meet the person. I saw you wearing a red shirt too. And now I came here wearing a red shirt. And so what? Now, it doesn't mean it will mean anything per se at that instant. The Holy Spirit is just open you, opening you up to something. See? So he's opening you up to visions. So when you see that, what do you do? It's not about the person yet. It's about you. Right? Wow, Holy Spirit. That was you. Whoa! You know, wow, Lord, I see visions now. Wow! Thank you. Thank you. You will show me more vision. Now, what are you doing? Acknowledging. That's the number third, no, the third thing. You read your Bible, you pray, and then the next, you must acknowledge Him. Every small thing you know, you know, because God will speak to you, He will speak to you. You know, sometimes you're praying to God, Lord, I have, I have your tithe with me. I just got paid. I just got blessed. And, and this is my tithe. Remember I told you, that is the first thing you must do when you receive money. That's what Moses meant when he said, you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that gives you power to get with. What does he remember? You must acknowledge the Lord your God. Every time you receive funds, every time you receive a blessing, every time you receive an increase, you must acknowledge the Lord your God. And how do you acknowledge Him? The best way you acknowledge Him is by bringing His tithes to Him first. They say, Lord, thank you. You just blessed me. And I appreciate you, Lord. So, Lord, you know, I'll honor you with my tithe. So, what do you want me to do with it? See? And sometimes the Lord begins to drop a name in your heart. Now you have prayed. And He begins to drop a name in your heart. I'm hearing this, this, this name. Alright, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the person. And then you call the person. Hey, how are you doing? I was praying today and, 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 and then suddenly the person begins to tell you, I, I actually, thank God you called me, I actually have this problem. Oh, stop, 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 stop. So what is it? While I was praying and, and the Lord said I should send you this amount of money. I said, whoa. Yeah. Now when that happens, what do you do? He obeyed the Lord, send it and he said, Lord, now I can tell you are speaking to me. Wow, thank you. Thank you. You see that acknowledgement? It increases your sensitivity. It increases him doing more for you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It increases it. I, I, I want you to begin to hear the voice of God. Nobody can teach you this is how. No. Or nobody can lay hands on you for God to speak to you. But what am I doing to you? I'm teaching you how to get yourself in that atmosphere. And for a start, most times when God begins to talk to you, you will think it's your mind that is talking, is talking to you. But I told you how you know the difference. Your mind will not add knowledge to you. Your mind will only tell you what it knows and what it is used to. See? But when knowledge is being added to what is going through your mind, when knowledge is being added, when wisdom is being, when your mind is being expanded, then you know an external being is interfering with your communication. So what is that? That is God. Because you ask God to speak to you. And hear me, 
You cannot ask God to speak to you and Satan will now come and speak to you. But I'll tell you this. You don't, strub, you don't trouble God to speak to you. You must learn patience. And I'll close with this. You know, sometimes, oh God, you must speak to me. Oh God, you must speak to me. Three days, you must speak to me. You must speak to me. You must speak to me. Oh Father, you must speak to me. Oh Father. Most times when people act that way, the first voice they hear is the voice of Satan. See, yeah, I'm telling you the truth. So why would God allow Satan to speak? No, he didn't allow Satan. You invited Satan because you were desperately looking for a voice. You remember Elijah when he ran away from Jezebel? He was desperate to hear God. Hey, the Bible says there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. See, because he knew God. When the earthquake came, he thought that was God coming, but he knew how to know this is God. Maybe if the Lord permits us, we'll go further in this next week. But for now, let's think. I pray that the Spirit of God opens your understanding and that you will begin to be sensitive to know exactly when God is speaking to you. I bless you with this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.